Coming up on Chasing the Sun. A hot tip leads to a high-speed trip down the Gulf's intercoastal waterway in search of a boiling topwater fight. One of the cool things about our bay system here is it's different parts and it flows all through the county. If you want to see old Florida, you want to see the woods in Florida untouched, you can ride through the canal and see just all kinds of wildlife in their natural habitat. You guys want to know something funny about Justin? He's totally OCD. Just take the rod and rod holder. Rod holder, you dope. <laughs> Once we rode around for about an hour in the open bay, I'm not gonna lie, I was getting a little worried. I say we give us some gas, man, and just run around. We're here at Next Gen VR, fixing to do a little VR. So we have 130 games. I died. Chasing the Sun is brought to you by Dulce Vita Tequila, Ingle Coolers, the original high performance cooler, Florida Fishing Products, Fish Better, Fish Florida, and by Z Man Fishing Products, the science and art of fishing. One of the cool things about our bay system here is it's different parts and it flows all through the county, which is why they call this Bay County. The Intercoastal Waterway, it's a series of canals that connect each bay system all along the Gulf Coast. As a matter of fact, it connects a lot of the, the eastern part of the country. Uh, you can really circumnavigate not only just the state of Florida, but the entire east coast all down the Mississippi River and then back through the Gulf. So my buddy Kyle Pitts gets a report that these big jack crevels, well, nuclear jacks, as he calls them, are schooled up and they're crashing these schools of pogies out in the open water in the bay. Justin and Kyle got a tip the jack mash is happening in a bay just around the corner from us. Well, that affords them an opportunity to get in the ICW, which is a huge waterway system for navigation. And the cool part about it is, is the only traffic that's really on it in the middle of the week is commercial traffic. So when you're in the fast boat, you get to experience the exhilaration of speed and pretend that you're a racer for the day. It's, it's absolutely what makes me want to go out and go for rides. All right, we're loose, Kyle. Right on, man. So how far of a ride is it from here up to the intercoastal? From here, probably, probably about 30 minutes or so. Wow. This boat right here, it goes pretty <laughs> fast. And we're gonna cut that down to about 20 minutes. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm ready to see what this thing will do. Part of what makes the boat ride so awesome has always been the exhilaration of speed. You're low to the water, you're flying down slick, calm areas. It's part of the reason to go. You know, our bay system's connected to the Gulf of Mexico. We can get pretty much anywhere we want by running across the Gulf, but when it gets rough, it's not a lot of fun to cross the Gulf of Mexico. So we can jump in the intercoastal waterway, and if we want to head somewhere, we can open up the throttle, put the throttle on the dash, and just sit back and cruise through a nice protected canal. One thing that I always notice when I actually get in the canal, put the throttle on the dash and start cruising, is the environment around you just comes to life. If you want to see old Florida, uh, you know, you want to see the woods in Florida untouched, you can ride through the canal and see just all kinds of wildlife in their natural habitat because what we did for a lot of our intercoastal around here was connect these canals 
and cut straight through the woods. So you'll see big sand bluffs. Matter of fact, you can go ride four wheelers and stuff out there. It's just like endless opportunities for your outdoorsy kind of people like me to get out there, get in the woods, on the water, and just see all things that the nature around here has to offer. So when I jump on the boat with Kyle, I'm kind of like fishing his report, and that's kind of out of my comfort zone. And we'll be, we'll see the birds in the white water. I mean, it'll, it'll be noticeable. Just look at that, look oh, at the fish, gosh, look at the fish. That's the stuff right there. So when I jump on the boat with Kyle, I'm kind of like fishing his report and that's kind of out of my comfort zone. You know, I like to be in charge and kind of organize everything. And this was one of those days where, you know, Kyle was the one that had the hot fishing report. So we were gonna go fish his report. Well, once we rode around for about an hour in the open bay and we're seeing the birds, seeing a little bait, but not seeing the fish, I'm not gonna lie, I was getting a little worried. I say we give it some gas, man, and just run around. And they really try to cover a lot of water fast, you know what I mean? We'll, we'll know it when we see them. They'll pop up, they'll be making some ruckus. The thing about the ocean is, is there's a relationship between predator and prey that's age old. It's been going on since the beginning of time and it carries on every single day. What you have is the fish using different structure on the bottom or different markers on the bottom to drive the prey to the surface so that they have no escape. And when they do that, it also allows the birds who work symbiotically with the fish to feed. So we have these ocular feeders, primarily the pelicans. They're gonna dive in and pick off the ones that are left behind. You know, even though me and Kyle guide together and we fish you know, near each other all year long, this is a different type of fishing that we don't get to do on a lot of charters because we're just burning a lot of gas and riding around, which kind of sounds like Travis to me. This is like exactly right down his alley. But for us, you know, we're usually trying to go where we know we're gonna catch fish, um, you know, stuff that's more predictable. And this is very unpredictable. We're really just riding around looking for those signs that are gonna lead us to the fish and we don't know when or where we're gonna find them. So, and we'll, be, we'll see the birds in the white water. I mean, it'll, it'll be noticeable. So even though it's something, you know, kind of different, it's really cool to be able to get together with Kyle for this and get to do something different than we do on our daily guiding. As you're riding along and you're looking for fish, you're always making decisions based on your observations. Now, these decisions are gonna to lead to your success or failures. But if you don't make a decision, you're not gonna have any success. So you have to change and adapt and move with open water fish. As they move, they're predictable. The cool thing about open water fish is you're gonna have more than one shot. So it's not a win or lose deal. You can figure out what they're doing based on what you're doing and get around and get in front of them. But most importantly, the first thing you have to do is find them. Hey, look at, hey, look at them pushing water out there. That's what we're looking for. Justin and Kyle are playing the run and gun fishing game. It's basically where you see your target and you run right into them, which isn't exactly the best way to do it, and you throw some lures in there and you hook a few fish. Or, what they're really doing is trying to establish a pattern of which direction these fish are going so they can play it smart and get around in front of them and let the fish come to them. Which if you watch this, in the end, that's exactly what they're doing. Just look at, hey, look oh, at the fish, gosh, look at the fish. Dang, that's the stuff right there. Dude, hey, I, hey, keep going right there to them, bro, because they're, they're moving so far away from us so fast. Dude, they're marching look away Look, right here. Here. Yeah. Look, right here, right here, right here. Golly. Look at him right here beside the boat. Look at him, oh my gosh! Woo -hoo -hoo. Holy cow! So once you do find these jacks crashing on the surface, you really just gotta get in front of the fish in order to catch them. Man, this is like full contact fishing. Put some heat on this thing. All right, nuclear jack number one.
you know when you're watching TV and every once in a while you hear one of those words that cracks you up? It's gonna happen right here. Golly! <laughs> Golly! That's full of grown right there. Well, Kyle, I can say I've caught a lot of jackrabels in my life. That would be the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they existed like that. Look at that. And the cool thing is there's about a thousand more on the surface feeding right now, right there. That's a big one. So we're gonna get this tank. <laughs> or what do you call it? Woo, what nuclear. Is it called? Nuclear jack. We're gonna get this nuclear jack back in the water and go go, go catch one yeah, of those nuclear Yeah, we, we got many more to catch. All Let's right. go. Perseverance and dedication that these boys exhibit leading up to this point is driven by faith. We see which direction they're moving when they're up foaming on the surface, but once they go down, uh, we're trying to get where we think they're gonna come up next, but these fish don't even know where they're gonna come up next. You guys wanna know something funny about Justin? He's totally OCD. Dude lives in a box. <laughs> it's great. So Kyle's putting the rod down and he's doing exactly the thing that Justin absolutely can't stand, which is putting it on the deck. You know, so you hear Justin go rod holder, rod holder, rod holder. Just take the rod and rod holder. Rod holder, you dope. <laughs> the best part about Justin is he can't stop being Justin. You know, the Justin that we love and know is so squared away that he can't help but be himself. So the camera's on the deck and it's still running because you know, it's just this is what we like to do with Justin, you screw with him. And Justin can't help it. The rag's there, the fish slime's there, he's gonna wipe it up. No matter what's going on, we're stopping everything for him to make the blood and the slime go away. <laughs> Shut up! Look at this guy. I can hear y'all. I mean, that crowd can wait. We got fish to get. Yeah, but a clean boat catches more fish. That is very true. I do live by that <laughs> So one thing that's kind of difficult about trying to set up on these jacks is we see which direction they're moving when they're up foaming on the surface, but once they go down, uh, we're trying to get where we think they're gonna come up next, but these fish don't even know where they're gonna come up next because they're swimming in every direction trying to find the next bait ball they're gonna crash. So we make a prediction, we jump up there, sometimes we're right, sometimes we're not. The perseverance and dedication that these boys exhibit leading up to this point is driven by faith because when you can't see what's going on but you know what's gonna happen, you gotta stick with it. They kind of went down right there. They will. I've, they keep working their way up. I'm telling you, that's them making all those weights right there. Oh, yeah. So normally it's me that's trying to catch whatever we're fishing for on the fly rod, but today was different. I wasn't really going to try to. Kyle brought the fly rod. He wanted to catch one of these what, nuclear jacks on the fly, but, you know, I was just going to throw plugs and stuff. Well, the funny thing is I was trying to be courteous, you know, be a nice host and let Kyle jump up front with the spinner rod and catch one. And as soon as he got hooked up, I thought, you know, hey, I see a fly rod sitting there. I might as well snatch it up and try to catch one on the fly. And the first shot in there, of course, it was the right school of fish. And I was just in the right place at the right time. And I got the hook up and got to catch one of them giants on the fly rod. Look at my fly right here, right by the moat. Oh, I got him. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm talking about. Holy crap. Woo! Look around the boat, they're everywhere. I need to go back on you, boss. You know, that's why we do it, man. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, holding on to that fly line. I mean, you see it, the drag screaming, all that. Oh, he's coming at me. Not for long. There he goes again. Man, that's just a blast. You can't, you know, you can't find action that's better than that. Cheers. <laughs> this is what's so cool about fishing. And this is why people never get bored of it, never get tired of it, and they do it until the day they die, is it's so different every day. 
Man, I mean, these baits up here, these pogies, all this stuff, you know, we know this is up here. A lot of times we'll catch redfish on them. Um, but it's so cool just to have something different, you know, a big school of Jack Cravels. Probably one of the most underestimated game fish that swims no, in Florida water. Absolutely, waters. man. These things get, they don't get any of the credit they deserve. One thing Justin's learned from me is that if you don't have to do something, you don't have to do it because somebody else is gonna do it for you. Which is the great part about fishing, we all work together. Kyle is landing Justin's fish. Hey, I just had to grab mine solo. This is solo challenge, you grab yours now. Well, that's fine, it's not my fly rod, it's yours. <laughs> never you know mind. Hey, never mind, I'll grab him. But in doing so, he commits the number one atrocity in fishing. He grabs the rod above the cork, and you hear Justin say, don't grab the tip. You know how grabbing a fish on the fly rod, oh gosh, don't grab the tip. In fishing, there's a few things you don't do. More importantly, there's a few things you never do. And Kyle should know better than what he's doing. But what he's doing is because he's so excited. <laughs> That's a pair of jacks right there. Yes. Head bump. Head bump. Boop. When we're letting these guys go and landing them, you'll notice we try to avoid that part of his tail, man. These are like spikes right here. They'll cut you very good. So we try to avoid that part. So you'll notice when Kyle grabs or I grab, we grab him by the fork part or up here around his head, but not around that spiky part of his tail. Yeah. Another good thing about the jack, they're a really hardy fish. <clears throat> or at least really good. So we have 130 games and they're always changing, so there's always something new. That's actually pretty rad. Oh, I got shot. Chasing the Sun has been brought to you by Latitude Tournament Boats. Humminbird. Simply, clearly, better. Pirates Cove Marina, you enjoy the golf, we'll take care of the rest. And by Sport Trail Trailers. If Mother Nature decides you can't enjoy the outdoors, look for a virtual replacement. Travis finds a good one with the latest interactive technology at NextGen VR. We're here at NextGen VR. I'm fixing to do a little VR. So we have 130 games and they're always changing, so there's always something new. We usually do 12 and up because of head size. If they can fit in the headset, then they can play. One that's our most popular, which is Arizona Sunshine, can play. You can play up to four. It's like kind of like a zombie shooter game. Yay. And you can all get in there and just kill a bunch of zombies with your friends. It's really fun. I want to play that one. Are you ready? Grab that. Mm hmm. Put it on your eyes. Oh, wow. That's actually pretty rad. Except I can't see my hands. Finding a game experience you like is not hard to do. Oh, I got shot. There's something for everyone, <laughs> even Travis. What's he got? One punch at a time. I gotta tell you, this is my first experience in VR, and it's really fun. It's very fun. Yeah, it is. I love it. <laughs> So we burned some serious gas just riding around the bay out here looking for all this action. When we finally found the first wad of fish, we didn't just pull up to the fish and throw into the school, we became part of the school. Oh, exactly. I mean, we were completely surrounded 360 degrees by nothing but Jack Cravels just crashing these little baits. You know, this whole day was a blast. That's just 
fishing with Kyle. I mean, that's why I love fishing with Kyle. He's so much fun. And, you know, even if the fishing's not that great, we still always have a good time. We cut up, play around. But today was just one of the magical days where you got an awesome guide on the boat, to, you know, old friend, and, and go have a good time. And then the fish played along. They, uh, they knew exactly what we needed and they gave it to us, I mean, just nonstop, all day. We absolutely could have caught these things till our arms fell off. I mean, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't been able to catch one myself on a fly rod in a long time, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. to come out here and get to do that, man, that was that was a lot of fun, man. I had a blast. I did too. Yes. Appreciate it, brother. Yes, thank you, man. We're ready for a nice cruise back through the intercoastal and just, you know, open the throttle up and watch the sunset. It's just like a movie, you know I mean? It's just every part of it played out perfectly.